Well, hello, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Glenn Zolman. I am the Vice President of STEM Jobs. I'm also a former uh, educator, taught math for 12 years, middle school, high school. And I'm Ellen Egley. I'm the Education Content Manager here at STEM Jobs. Um, and I have a lot of experience in the education technology industry and some teaching experience before that in middle school and elementary school. And we're going to talk to you about the latest issue of STEM Jobs magazine and all the materials that are associated with that. So here's the, the magazine. It's Explore Your World and Beyond. And uh, we're going to go through what's in the lesson plans, what the articles are that we talked, that we uh, covered, uh, who we interviewed, who we talked to, all the kind of cool STEM jobs that we focused on. Um, and uh, really, we want to uh, just help teachers know how to get the most out of the content in the magazine. That's right. Um, we want to talk specifically about how to access the lesson plans that are available to go along with the STEM magazine um, because the STEM toolkit is a great resource for you, but we want to make sure that you're getting everything you can out of the resources that we're providing for you. So we're going to talk a little bit about the um, lesson plans that are associated with every article in the STEM Jobs magazine, um, how you access those, and how you can make the most out of them in your classroom. Yeah, speaking of the toolkits, we've got one back here. Uh, hopefully you've received one of these if you've been sponsored uh, by a college or employer or maybe you purchased it yourself. Um, if not, uh, we'll talk a little bit more later on about how that can happen. Um, and of course, all of the resources that we're talking about are available for purchase as well if you haven't, uh, haven't received those. So um, the first thing we want to do is talk a little bit about the lesson plans and the model that we use in, in making the lesson plans. And for our lesson plans, we typically follow the 5E model. Um, and we chose this model because it really helps the students be the center of the lesson plan. Um, so very few of our lesson plans are teacher-directed. They're mostly student-directed and student-centered, um, which we have found is really the best way to engage students in STEM subjects and in these lesson plans. So the 5E stand for engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Um, and in the explore sec or excuse me, in the engage section, our main focus is getting students engaged with the material. So we typically start out by having students read the article in the STEM Jobs magazine that's associated with the lesson plan. Um, a lot of times we'll also direct you to some videos um, that give nice background information or can get students excited about the material. Um, then in explore, um, students are actually assigned usually a project-based learning task that they'll work on typically in groups. Um, and we provide all the resources that they'll need to be able to su successfully complete that activity. Um, we don't want to create a lot of extra work for the teachers in the classrooms. Yeah. Um, being, you know, classroom teachers ourselves, we understand that your time and resources are really limited. Um, so our goal was really to empower you to have ready-made lesson plans that you can implement fairly easily in your classroom. Um, in the explain section, students are typically presenting their findings if they're doing a research project. Um, excuse me, um, they're showing their uh, models or their designs that they've created as part of the activity. Um, and then in Elaborate, we give you some different extension activities that you can do with your students. And typically we try to provide a variety of difficulty levels um, and different levels of rigor. Um, we know that you have diverse classrooms. We know that there's probably one of you in your classroom. Um, so we try to give you some different extension activities to try with your students. And then in Evaluate, we give you some different tools to evaluate the work that your students have done, sometimes in the form of rubrics, sometimes journal entries, um, some different ways to try evaluating because we know that when you first implement project-based learning in your classroom, figuring out how to actually evaluate the work your students have done can often be the most daunting part. So we want to make that easier for you. Yeah, we've tried to make these lesson plans as easy to access and use and, and make them flexible, while also giving you some really rigorous content, uh, some activity that students are really going to like and engage in, um, and that really uh, expose students to the, the amazing things that are available in STEM careers. So some key takeaways on our lesson plans uh, like Ellen said, we really try to empower students to be the center of that learning process so that as a teacher, you don't have to be the expert on, on everything. You really can just guide them, shape the way that they're learning, make sure that they're on track, keep them going in the right direction. Um, you don't need to be the, the, the supreme owner of, of knowledge. You know, that, that's what Google is for, frankly. So uh, don't, don't feel you know, threatened by that. We want the students to be the center of that learning uh, we want you to collaborate. We really want you to reach across the hallway to the to the science teachers, the math teachers, 
the, the uh, design classes, the art teachers, um, the, the music classes. Uh, really you know, work collaboratively, uh, work with the other professionals that are in your buildings because that's how the workforce is. We, we don't isolate ourselves. We don't work in, in these silos where it's just me and nobody else and I can't ask for help. So you know, show your students that that's how the world works. Um, uh, think cross-curricularly. Uh, that's you know, the same idea. Go, go to those other teachers in other areas and really, really let them help and let them contribute and, and enhance that lesson. Um, and and part, part of that really is showing your students that uh, you as an educator are a lifelong learner, that you know, you're not just confined to knowing math. I was a math teacher, uh, but, but I really was interested in science and physics and, uh, and art and geography and other you know, kinds of uh, you know, areas in that we always, we always want to be learning, always want to be pushing ourselves. And lastly, and you'll hear this a couple more times, but feel free to modify these. Um, you know, make them better, add more to them, take away, change the, the premise. Uh, you know, we have middle school and high school versions of each one. They're all tied to state and, and national standards. So feel free to, uh, to take these and, and adapt and modify them to, to, be, to be, you know, workable for, for your students and, and your, your curriculum. Um, even if you only just take one little piece of what we provided for you and that becomes something that you then can use in a different way, that, that's fantastic. That's really what we want. Right, and we do understand that um, you know many teachers are intimidated by the STEM subjects themselves. Um, so, with every issue of the magazine and its corresponding lesson plans, we try to give you a broad spectrum of rigor. Um, so, there are some lesson plans that are a little bit less rigorous and have an easier access point, um, both for you and for the students, um, so that you can maybe start out with that lesson plan and then work your way up to the more rigorous ones as you as your comfort level um, increases in the classroom with the subject matter and with that type of um, teaching approach um, that you've maybe never used before. So we really do try to provide a broad spectrum for you um, so that you can find a lesson plan that you're comfortable with as a starting point. Yeah, exactly. So let's dig into the magazine and uh, the lesson plans. So like we said, this is the latest issue. Uh, this just came out in uh, November. This is Explore Your World and Beyond. So we're really focusing on land, sea, air, and space sciences in this. Um, so we're going to go through those different kind of categories, talk about the articles that we that we did, who we talked to, and lesson plans that go with those. So the first one was land science, uh, or geoscience, or earth science is often referred to. So it's any of the sciences that deal with the planet, how those different ecosystems work together, uh, People that are involved in earth science deal with physics, they deal with chemistry, biology, uh, mathematics, all different kinds of areas of, of science and, and obviously lots of STEM fields, technology, um, uh, really just to see how those different systems interact with each other. Uh, in this issue, we happen to talk to a couple of engineers at the uh, Army Corps of Engineers who are working on, um, these two have been working on some environmental issues around watersheds and around building dams. Uh, but but that that group of people do all kinds of work all across the country. They do amazing work. Um, we're also talking to some researchers at Stanford, and they're looking at how ocean waves can help predict earthquakes. It's kind of an interesting article about how when the uh, water hits the hits the shore, it releases impact waves, and they can they can um, take that and use that to uh, extrapolate the data and look at how uh, we can predict better predict earthquakes. So some really cool stuff right there. So for the lesson plan um, to go along with this article, we focus back on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And as Glenn mentioned, um, the Army Corps of Engineers is responsible for a lot of the infrastructure development in the U.S. Um, so one of the things that they're responsible for, in addition to watershed management and um, dam building, is also designing and maintaining our bridges. Um, so that's what we focused on in the lesson plan. And in this lesson plan, we're actually having students um, become cost engineers and cost engineer a bridge, um, which is very different than the, you know, build a bridge, see how much it can hold typical activity that students are used to doing in classrooms. Um, here we actually provide you a list of resources that they can choose to use in their bridge building project, but each one is associated with a cost, including yeah. the time they research, the time they design, the time they talk to each other, all of it comes with a price. Um, so they have to really try to balance um, the structural properties of their bridge with the cost associated. Um, so eventually they present their designs, 
um, and get to test them to see which bridge can hold the most um, and compare that back to the cost associated with building the bridge. So the winner isn't just the bridge that can hold the most, it's the one that balances the cost and structural integrity the best way. Yeah, really, really cool project. Uh, again, lots of areas to integrate across different, um, different curricula areas. Uh, you can reach out to the, the, the design teachers, people that work with CAD programs and help the students model those bridges out. Uh, obviously, physics and science teachers talking about properties of different materials mm -hmm. and structural components, and then obviously the mathematics side of things with with the cost mm -hmm. uh, analysis part of things. So lots of areas in that lesson plan for, to, to look at. Uh, next area in the magazine was uh, sea sciences. So we talked to, that's oceanography. So we talked to some folks at uh, NOAA. That's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So sea science, sorry, uh, deals with all different kinds of things around the ocean. So you have marine uh, sciences, marine biology is one thing that, that students might have kind of heard that, that term, but all the different uh, ecosystems that are down there, plate tectonics, ocean currents. Uh, I know that you and I have both looked at some of the cool things that uh, companies like GE are doing with building wave turbines. Uh, which are these big, huge fans that capture uh, ocean waves mm -hmm. to, to generate energy. Uh, but lots of things going on with, with oceanography. So at NOAA, uh, we talked to some engineers, and they actually focused on um, uh, a couple of things. One is uh, looking at storms that form over land versus storms that form over sea. So they do a lot of research. They fly into hurricanes mm -hmm. and things like that, to typhoons, and look at the different properties of those storms and how the how the uh, atmospheric conditions um, impact mm -hmm. uh, our weather. Um, and then we also talked to some folks that are in charge with building underwater uh, ROVs or remote um, operated vehicles. So these are these unmanned, you know, submersibles that go into the water and, and you know go down and find the Titanic or things mm -hmm. like that. So. Um, so we talked to some folks uh, at, at NOAA that, that do that, and obviously they're exploring different areas of marine life and the seafloor with those mm -hmm. ROVs, but uh, our lesson plan has students do something similar, I think. Right, so um, we thought that the remotely operated vehicles would really capture students' imaginations and help them engage a little bit more with the concept. So in this lesson plan, students are responsible for breaking into teams and designing their own remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, um, to achieve a specific purpose. Um, so here, um, students might be um, deciding which shipwreck they'd like to explore, and then they have to look at the ocean currents and the depth and the pressure associated with that to build their own ROV. They have to think about what tools will it need, um, not only to reach an artifact from their sunken ship, but also to re retrieve it. You know, do they need to have right. a saw, a drill, an arc welder? Do they need Those to have grippy things? They definitely need grippy things. <laughs> um, you know, do they need some sort of container to put the artifact into to get it back up to the surface efficiently and safely? Um, so they're going to de develop this plan for an ROV together um, and then present it to the class. Yeah, it's a great project. Uh, you know, a lot of schools uh, that we go out and visit have robotics programs, mm -hmm. which are amazing programs. One of the things a little bit different about ROV program, and actually they do have ROV competitions uh, for underwater. Uh, vehicles. I actually talked to some teachers that are part of those things, amazing competitions. But one of the things that's different is if you're building a, a robot essentially that has to go underwater, there's a whole different set of atmospheric conditions to be able to deal with salt water versus fresh water, like you said, water pressure. Uh, it has to be able to withstand just a whole different set of things that doesn't destroy the, the vehicle when it goes down there. So, a really cool project for students to work on and a really different way of looking at uh, robotics specifically. Mm -hmm. So, cool stuff there. Um, next thing we have is uh, geospatial science um, and or, or geomatics. So this is actually all about gathering information around um, the, the geography of the area, so topography and all the different uh, sciences around being able to, to build maps, uh, do air navigation, do GPS systems, things like that. Uh, and we talked with some folks at, um, at Lockheed Martin around this. Now Lockheed Martin does a lot of things with building aircraft, they build spaceships, um, you know, but but they also build a lot of the systems that go into GPS systems mm -hmm. and, and mapping systems. Uh, so we talked to some cool folks at, at Lockheed Martin. You know, one of the interesting things about, about uh, geospatial uh, technology and science is that one of the biggest areas of uh, careers for that is actually in video game development. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? After working on this, I did, but before that, it yeah. really surprised me. Yeah, because, and, and what it is, is that 
the video game designers need people that can build the the worlds, the maps that, that students are um, operating in. So, um, yeah, really, really big area right there. So in, in that mm -hmm. lesson plan, uh, what do we have students doing in that lesson plan? In this lesson plan, we have students actually um, take on responsibility for designing a specific aircraft. Um, so in, in this lesson plan, students need to design an aircraft that is capable of the longest ever flight without refueling. Um, so students have to think about the weight of the aircraft, um, its aerodynamics, the distance it has to travel, um, a lot of different factors that go into um, making an airplane efficient. Um, so they have to think about maybe some alternate fuels to help it along its journey, um, a lot of different things that students are doing there. Yeah, a lot of great resources from Lockheed Martin, some of the places that we provided mm -hmm. in, in that lesson plan. So uh, lastly, we've got air science, uh, aerospace. This is all about basically being able to, to travel or fly in in our atmosphere or near space. Mm -hmm. So this isn't going to the moon or going to Mars, it really is flying around uh, in, in our atmosphere here. And so, um, you know, we've got you have Boeing, you've got Airbus, all these big companies that design airplanes. Just saw an article that they're actually increasing the size of that giant A380. Uh, it's going to be able to carry like 750 people, crazy, crazy yes. airplane. Um, but we, for this article, we actually talked to the folks at Solar Impulse. Now, if you haven't uh, heard of what that is, it's actually featured on our cover right here. So this is the Sol Solar Impulse plane. And what they are doing with that is they are probably become the first ever to circumnavigate the globe, so go all the way around the globe with a solar-powered airplane. Mm -hmm. uh, they launched, I believe they launched back in April, uh, and they made it about a third of the way. They're actually now in Hawaii. The plane's in Hawaii and they, they have to work on the battery systems, but actually you can go, if you just Google uh, Solar Impulse, you can find the website and you can look at where they're at. Uh, it's part of the uh, lesson plan. We have students go there and research what they're doing with Solar Impulse, but a really cool plane. And we talked to one of the primary engineers uh, who built the plane, and she's an amazing lady, uh, has a great story, and really interesting what they're trying to do with, with that, that whole project. So for the lesson plan, we actually have students do a little bit more of a research project um, around solar impulse. So they're going to look at how the flight path was planned, um, the different ways that the solar energy is used and stored on the aircraft. Um, they have to think about the environmental impacts of this technology. Is it sustainable? Is it preferable over um, fossil fuels? Um, those kinds of things. So they do some in-depth research and then um, do a large presentation to the class um, to show their findings. Um, and then I believe in this one we provide a rubric for you to help evaluate the presentations. Um, you know, and we encourage you to have them displayed throughout your school um, to get students kind of excited about it and, and asking some really worthwhile questions. Yeah, and again, a great, great project to, to expand out uh, into other you know, areas all across your building. Uh, I know I've seen some schools that are doing some work with solar panels and, and you can buy some really cheap uh, small scale to, to power, mm -hmm. ba power batteries and things like that. So lots, lots of cool things with, with that. Obviously the, the different uh, fuel sources and so so again a really great project. And and you know one of the things about STEM careers is that a lot of the careers that are in STEM are in research fields. So it's it's good to sort of change up the way we, we have students uh, interact with the content. You know and sometimes it's it's about actually putting together a presentation, but sometimes it's important just to figure out how do I research and find out more information about these things. So. Right. And another thing we've found is that um, students get a lot more engaged with STEM subjects um, whenever they see its real-world applications. Um, and environmentalism and envir environmental concerns is something that gets a lot of kids passionate and engaged in the classroom. Yeah. So you'll see that um, you know this issue lends itself really nicely to those kinds of concepts. Um, and we try to explore those with our students and um, and get them excited about having you know designs and ideas that can impact the world in a positive way. Yeah, and that really is the whole goal of all of this content that we provide is we want students to be excited about learning STEM. We want them to know that there are jobs in STEM careers that that they're going to be able to to go into that they'll be passionate about that that fit their passions. Uh, you know, so often you get students that. Um, that disregard STEM from an early age because they're like, well, I, I don't really want to be a scientist. I don't even know what scientists do. I, you know, I don't really want to be a mathematician. Uh, and they think of, you know, STEM careers in those very, very narrow categories mm -hmm. of being a scientist or being an engineer or being a mathematician. Mm -hmm. But they don't really have an idea what those things are. So we try to really open their minds up to, to different possibilities there. Mm -hmm. So. Um,
So if you've uh, purchased a classroom kit, so again, that green box back there, or if you're being sponsored by a college or an employer, uh, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you've pulled out these materials that are inside the classroom kit. We call this the hay letter because it says hay. And uh, that you've gone through the process of registering. Because if you register, then we send you a, um, a login that allows you to go to the website edu.stemjobs.com and, and log in and gives you access to all of the digital lesson plans. So along with the four lesson plans that we talked about in this webinar, there are five additional ones that are only available digitally and only available to schools that are sponsored or who have purchased the lesson plan um, packages or uh, the classroom kits on, on their own. So um, again, if you haven't registered, please make sure that you do that. Uh, and that gives you access to uh, all lesson plans. Again, nine total, four print, uh, five that are digital, middle school, high school versions uh, of all of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there also are free lesson plans available to you. So if you haven't been sponsored or haven't purchased one of the toolkits or lesson plan packages, lesson plan packages. Um, there are uh, lesson plans from last year that are available right now. If you go to edu.stemjobs.com, you can uh, find those resources and, and see the lesson plans that are, that are there. Um, we also will talk about the upcoming uh, issue of STEM jobs. You want to talk about that for a second? Sure. Our next issue is um, centered around Never Grow Up Industries. Um, so we don't want students to think, as Glenn had mentioned before, that STEM careers are really limited and narrow um, and involve wearing a lab coat and working in a lab doing who knows what all day. Um, so in this issue, we're going to focus on um, industries like music science and technology, toys, um, real life superheroes, um, such as firefighters, EMS workers, um, military people, um, lots of different things that yep. Um, you know, students, I think, associate with superheroes when they're little um, and don't realize that they have real life applications. And we also talk about some interesting jobs of the future, um, specifically in wearable technology, um, video game design, and um, open source prosthetics. Um, so there are a lot of really interesting industries that are kind of up and coming um, or that will be taking very new directions in the near future that we want students to be aware of and see themselves in, um, you yeah. know. So many of our students love playing video games and don't realize that that's a real job that they could do, yeah. um, you know, for the rest of their lives and enjoy. Um, so we want to get the word out there about these jobs that they might not be aware of and let them know that there is a place for them in a STEM career um, and that they don't have to be bored. They don't have to be like they're going to work every day. They get a chance to do what they love. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, we, we talk a lot here about how uh, the students that are uh, graduating right now from high school are going to be retiring from their careers sometime around 20, 60, 65. Uh, so what, what jobs are they going to have then? You know, so it's really important for us to show or get them thinking about the fact that there are a lot of jobs, uh, in fact, most jobs that are going to exist then don't exist now. And so trying to highlight some of those. So we had a little bit of fun with that issue or with that, with that in the magazine and I'm looking forward to, to sharing that with all of you guys. So, um, so if you're interested in learning more about uh, STEM jobs and STEM jobs classroom kits, the magazine, lesson plans, uh, there's hot job posters that are in there, all kinds of great resources to really supercharge your STEM program. Uh, you can look at the, or go to the link that's shown on the video here, or you can go to um, edu.stemjobs.com, or you can email us at info at stemjobs.com. Uh, so appreciate you spending some time with us today. Hope that you got a lot out of this, and look forward to uh, helping you with your uh, STEM programs in the future. Thanks and take care.